Hello and thank you for joining me again on Run Level Zero. Today we're talking Sparky Linux. This is a Debian based distribution. It's based on Debian's testing branch. I've been testing this out for a couple of weeks now and I've really enjoyed my time with Sparky. Um, it comes in a variety of desktop environments, the main ones being Enlightenment and LXDE, but it's also available in an ultra lightweight OpenBox and Joe Window Manager edition, that's their ultra edition, as well as Mate and Razor QT. If you're newer to Linux, you're not familiar with Debian, uh, just just some uh, a few words about it. Debian is one of the oldest Linux distributions out there and it's known for its stability. It's known for being well tested, well put together, and it makes a solid platform to build on top of. There's a huge community for support and just about any software that you want to install in Linux you're going to be able to find packages available for Debian and Debian based distros. Uh, this is, like I said, based on Debian testing and it supports and it supports a rolling release cycle it's built to be lightweight and quick and and it's really appropriate for older machines and newer machines alike it's available in 32 and 64 bit now before we get started I really can't say that Sparky Linux is appropriate for a new user Sparky Linux has a lot going on as you're going to see and really to get the most out of the system to, to really appreciate everything that it brings to the table you really need to be a bit more seasoned in Linux so let's get started today we're gonna to take a look at the Razer QT edition if you're not familiar with the Razer QT desktop this is a desktop that is beautiful and lightweight it's comparable with the LXDE, the LXDE or lightweight X11 desktop environment. In fact, uh, at the at, toward the the latter part of 2013, Razer QT and LXDE announced that they're going to be merging, and they're going to be bringing us LXDE QT. So they are very comparable, but I really don't think that Razer QT gets enough press, and it doesn't get the respect that it deserves. It is a solid, beautiful, beautiful highly configurable desktop environment. So that's why I've chosen to uh, at least begin my reviews of Sparky Linux here. Logging into Sparky Linux, you get a, a familiar, more traditional desktop layout. You have one primary desktop with a nice analog clock widget. Now, uh, Razer QT has a lot in common with KDE and that they're both built on the QT libraries and similar to um, KDE there are a few widgets available for you to put on the desktop natively in Razer QT although right now we're only limited to four Razer QT is a younger desktop environment and they're still growing so you can expect these plugins and widgets to grow over time especially after they merge with LXDE and gain more support there. Back to the desktop. We do have one primary panel across the bottom. On the lower right hand side is our calendar and clock. There is our volume control and right now it's a little stop sign exclamation point because I have the uh, the sound turned off on this virtual. This is running in a virtual box as usual. It has uh, two dedicated processors and two gigabytes of RAM. Next to the volume control is your network monitor, power manager, there is your clipboard manager, as well as your removable, your removable media and devices manager. Open windows are going to be displayed in the central portion of the panel. And over on the uh, left hand side there is a quick access to Sparky Aptus. Now one of the things that really impresses me about Sparky let me go ahead and give it my admin password here Sparky has Sparky Linux has done a really good job at creating GUIs that automate a lot of our command line 
tasks. So that's actually one of the reasons why I don't recommend Sparky for a new Linux user. And I know that may sound kind of odd, you know, new users will be more comfortable in a GUI, but I don't want new users to start using a GUI as a crutch. I believe, I, I firmly believe that new users should get into the command line, get into the terminal, and learn how to do things by hand so they know what's what's going on in their system. That's that's one of the real strengths of Linux is that it puts that much power in the user's hand that you can upgrade, update your system uh, right from the command line. Anything breaks, you can fix it in the command line. And I think it's important for the user to learn how to do that. But Sparky has done an excellent job at taking those tasks that, you know, once you've learned it, and you're doing it repeatedly, it can become kind of tedious. So it is nice to have a GUI option. So Sparky's done a good job at creating those GUIs and automating those tasks for us. So what Sparky Aptus is, is really a user interface for apt, which is apt-git, uh, is the, uh, the command line package manager for Debian-based systems, like Debian, Ubuntu, and that sort of thing. So, in Sparky Aptus, you have the option to upgrade your system. Which let me go ahead and uh, open up a terminal here. Where is my terminal? Launch a root terminal. All right. So, what this is doing, if you're if you're newer, when I say upgrade your system in the command line, you would run a sudo apt-get update okay that's going to upgrade your update your repositories and let your system know what software packages are available to it ampersand ampersand uh, sudo apt get uh, upgrade if I can type today and what sudo apt get upgrade is going to do it's going to ask the repositories if you have updates for any software packages on your system. So there's a new version of Chromium, a new version of Firefox, uh, updates to LibreOffice, what have you. This is going to upgrade those. What this is going to do, this GUI line here, upgrade, safely upgrade the system, it's going to run this in the background for you. So it really makes a tedious task simple. You also have the ability to do a distribution upgrade. So if there is uh, packages that upgrade the kernel, you know, bring you up to date from say Debian six to Debian seven, this that's what's what this what this is going to do for you. A quick install lets you allow allows you to install packages from the repository. You can install dev packages that you have downloaded. It also allows you to remove packages from your system, so if you want to uninstall Firefox, uh, you can do some house cleaning with auto remove to remove all unnecessary packages from your system. If you have old kernel modules, you can download those old kernels. Uh, you can fix broken packages that did not install or upgrade co correctly. You can remove all old versions of dev packages and remove downloaded dev packages from your system. So Sparky Aptus, this is just one example of the many customized utilities that Sparky has brought to the table. It's very impressive. Oh, just a word of advice. If you do use Sparky and you want to quit one of these, uh, these GUIs, don't X out of it. Go ahead and click exit. I learned that the hard way. Otherwise, it'll just pop it back up on you. Moving on. The panel uh, next to next to Sparky Aptus, moving left is Gexec, which will allow you to run any command on your system. So you can launch commands here. You also have the option to run it in a terminal emulator or run the command as root. There is a shortcut for your Razor Configuration Center. This is just your settings manager for Razor QT, and allows you to uh, set your default applications. You know, just a basic control center module right here. You can customize the look and feel of, of your system. Uh, control Java. 
Uh, it is using OpenBox as its window manager by default. But one of the great things about Razer QT, remember, it is a QT-based system. Uh, it has OpenBox now as its window manager, but because it has QT, if you wanted to install a window manager that's a little bit heavier, or actually a lot heavier on system resources, but also a lot heavier on eye candy, you can install KWIN here because KWIN being KDE's window manager, both based on the QT libraries, they play very, very well together. So if you want to get some eye candy going, you can install KWIN instead. Just thought I'd mention that. Moving along, you have a pager next in line, allows you to control your virtual desktops. There are two by default. And you have your application menu. The application menu is very similar to the LXDE menu. It's a no frills menu where all your applications are grouped by their function. So I want to hit on a few of them. We're not going to hit them all. The file manager is PCMan FM, which is a lightweight, full featured uh, file manager. Juff Ed is your text editor, as well as LeafPad. There's a shortcut for your root terminal, and Sparky Compton. Now, because Razor QT and the OpenBox window manager are both really designed to be lightweight and fast, they really they don't have any frills as far as visual effects go. Compton is a basic. Um, composite manager. So it's not going to give you wobbly windows, it's not going to give you uh, you know a desktop cube or anything like that, but what this will do is give you some basic visual effects. It's going to set up some basic transparencies on your windows, give some basic shadows around them. I'm not going to start it up here because we're in a virtual where it's not going to give us the most out of it. But this is a great way, if, if you choose to use that, if you choose to sacrifice a little bit of RAM to it, you can start that here. You can also edit the config file, load another config file that you download. Alright, back to the menu. Under games, there are quite a few games installed by default, including Play on Linux. For graphics, you have uh, Camerama uh, Webcam Viewer. The GIMP is installed as well as Q Comic Book, Comic Book Viewer. For internet, uh, Dropbox is installed for you, uh, as well as a Twitter client. Ice Dove is your mail client, and Ice Weasel is the default web browser. Let's see, you have an instant message client, client an IRC client. Team Viewer is installed, which you don't see that too often. You have a BitTorrent client, and you get. Under Office, the entire LibreOffice suite is installed for you, which is kind of unusual. You don't usually see that on a lightweight distro, so I, I appreciate that being there. Under Other, you have your open box configuration. For sound and video, there's quite a bit going on here. Audacity is installed, as well as a Vitamux. You have a DVD encoder, and DVD is installed. XL Music Player, Minitube, YouTube application. You have your sound uh, configuration. Radio Tray, which is an excellent uh, uh, internet radio application. Record My Desktop, so you can do screencasting. Uh, SM Player 2, and convert, you have a converter, XF Burn for your optical media, and VLC. So there's quite a bit going on in the sound and video department. Under System Tools, you have an assortment of, of system tools. The, the, usual, uh, the usual culprits can be found here. But again, you have so many. This is where you're going to find the, uh, the majority of your custom Sparky uh, uh, applications here, your GUI front ends. We already looked at Sparky Aptus. Let's take a look at Sparky Backup System. You can actually create an ISO that is a backup of your system, including all uh, all user data. So if you create a, uh, say you install Sparky, you do some customization to the theming, install and remove a few programs, and you want to 
uh, repackage that so you always have a backup of your system, you can do that here. But this is really a GUI front end. There's more than meets the eye here. This is really a GUI front end for Remaster Sys, which you can see is already installed. So from the command line, if you wanted to create a new distro based on Sparky, uh, one that would be suitable for you to customize and then share with your friends, you know what? That application is already here. It's already configured. It's great. So let's see what else we have. For system tools, um, let's see, we have apps, Sparky Backup, Apps Copy. This goes hand in hand with another GUI that they created, which is, there we go, Sparky Backup, Apps Recovery. These two really go hand in hand. So this actually allows you to create backup files of your applications. So if you installed Chromium, for, set, you know, for example, and then you did your customizations to Chromium, you can export those customizations to a backup file. And then if you say you wanted to reinstall your system and you didn't go through and create a complete backup, you can recover those settings from here. Or if you use several, uh, several systems, several different computers, and you have Sparky installed on all of them, you can really standardize your experience across those multiple systems. You can, you can create one master system and then use the recovery to import those settings into your other your other environments. So yeah, you can do that with, with a multitude of, uh, of applications. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Nice touch. Again, something for a more advanced user. You know, Wine is installed here uh, under preferences. You know, you're going to have your, your basic system preferences, you know, Razor QT settings, Flash, Bluetooth. Uh, Synaptic Package Manager is installed as a GUI front end for you to install uh, software, add and remove software, as well as you can uh, configure Windows wireless drivers. You know, Update Manager is in the settings menu. Uh, also, another thing about QT. Razor Q2, you can right click the desktop and have full access to your system menu as well. So you really, you could get away without even having a panel. Yeah, I'm really impressed by Sparky. Um, the, I think they've, they've got a solid product here. Again, not really appropriate for a new user, but definitely if you're intermediate or advanced, you, you could do a lot worse than to give Sparky a try. Um, highly customizable they have a lot going on and I appreciate the, the the spit and polish that they put on the system here download it give it a try let me know what you think uh, if there's another distro you want me to take a look at please drop it in the comments below if there's a how-to you want me to do I'll be happy to take a look at that uh, thank you for joining me today take a look at Sparky and I hope to be with you soon for another video